Hi everyone, some gamer dude here. I'm sure by now you've all seen the new information for Vanguard Overdress, the fourth era of Cardfight Vanguard. I really wish I had the time to make this a few days ago, but I guess one positive about getting to it later is that I've had the time to let the news simmer. Like with the V era, this new D era, what Vanguard Overdress has been coined, will cause the previous era to no longer be legal. Many are calling this another reboot, but it's apparent to me now that neither V, D, nor the intended G regulations are reboots. They're rotation. It's exactly how Pokemon is handled in Japan. When a new generation starts, the game rotates and starts fresh. I don't know how people feel about this versus the western rotation of a small cluster of sets, but I think cleaning of the slate is necessary, be it rotation or a ban list, so I don't think this is a bad thing at all. Bushirod uses power creep to sell sets, but he fights Akita has said as much in recent times, affirming what everyone can see as plain as day. From what I hear, Vanguard V got very unpleasant in its later stages, so this rotation has been met very positively, more so than G to V by a considerable margin. In a rather surprising move, Bushirod will be moving from two standard formats to three. I think the expected action was them to leave premium as is and have standard start over with overdress, but V era is continuing. In much the same way as premium got support with sets such as premium collection that gave premium more G units, V era will be getting support via products I assume to be in the vein of the upcoming clan selection boosters. While this has raised an eyebrow, how do they expect to manage this? I suspect that Bushiroad may end up cutting either Premium or V from events depending on which one is less popular. If I were to speculate, I would think that they want people to gravitate away from Premium and focus their attention on V for legacy formats. Essentially establishing that older formats will get a small amount of support during the new era, but that will gradually dissipate and will in turn be replaced as the new era becomes the old era. So with all of this out of the way, let's talk about the new Cardfight Vanguard Overdress. This is a sequel to the G era, 3000 years into Kray's future. I'm not sure what that says about V or the intentions behind it, but I won't speculate here. Guys is dead, Messiah sleeps, and Kray is without gods. Over the 3000 years, the map has been redrawn, nations renamed, and massive social changes have been made. Mechanically, this is the game dropping the clan system and replacing it with a nation system. All of the United Sanctuary clans are now Kita Sanctuary. All of the Dark Zone are now Dark States. All of the Stargate are now the Brant Gate. And the Dragon Empire stays the Dragon Empire. Magalanica and Zu have merged into the Stoichia Nation, with Bermuda becoming their own thing, now colour-coded pink, and being called Lyrical Monasterio. This is very obviously a good move. I've been saying for years that there are way too many clans and it's hard to support. This system means every nation is in every booster, and with both 120 card sets and starter decks, there is a ton of potential for a lot of variety in builds. Vanguard decks are made of about 14 individual cards, and about 3 cards can basically create a new deck. 24 cards on top of a deck per faction is just overflowing with potential. I still do see some benefit to the clan system in terms of expenditure. One buy in a year, and alternative builds do help prevent things from becoming stale. But you know your limits. You have to wait till support comes, and thanks to power creep, you will fall behind. There comes a point where you need to change decks to compete, or simply stop playing for a while because it's boring. It's also not good for stores for each set to be dependent on your player base's tastes. Some sets will shelf warm more than others. Nation has only ever been used twice before. The Xeroth and Progenitor Dragons. Outside of those two cycles of cards, it was an unused component and never played with. 
On top of this, the way clans developed with archetypes, it felt like clans had clans inside of them. This streamlines the game a lot. Nations will take the place of clans, as they should, and archetypes will very likely take the place of clans. I don't expect the difference to Vanguard, as we know, to be terribly pronounced. We'll still have archetypes, we'll still have decks built around a boss. Where things will get interesting is if some splashable cards are created in the old identity of clans, blurring the lines, which I sort of expect to happen. I will also say that this feels like the original intention behind Vanguard. If you recall back in the day, cards regularly called out clans and you could have mixed decks. Clans were much closer to that. Clans. This feels like it'll be a cleaned up version of that. I'm curious as to the flavour of the nations. The starter decks give us some hints, but it's interesting to say the least. You use Dragon Empire deck sounds like a ride chain deck. Evolve your buddy. Ride chains could get very interesting too, but I'll get into that later. Nevertheless, Dragon Empire looks very Kagero. Danji's Dark States deck looks like Spike Brothers, but mechanically could go Spike's old OTK maneuvers or Dark Irregular's huge middle column. I suspect that may actually be the point here, as Dark States theme might just be OTK. Toya's key to Sanctuary deck looks like Royal Paladin and sounds like Royal Paladin, buffing your field. The unifying theme of United Sanctuary has always been stability. Megumi's Stoichia deck looks like Great Nature and seems to be playing a bit like Grand Blue, Aquaforce and Great Nature, talking about multi-attacking. Aquaforce has Aquatic Furries and Grand Blue type art has been shown, so I don't doubt they'll show up. Finally, Tamari's Brunt Gate deck is Waifu Dimension Police themed, but mentions what seems to be a recontextualized lock. Not sure how Nova Grappler fits in there, but Cyber Dragon type art has been shown. Overdress is removing imaginary gifts and introducing a few new things. The big one is the Ride deck. You differently sleeve your grade 0 and a grade 1 through 3 of your choice and set them aside. Now whenever you ride, you may discard a card from your hand to ride the appropriate grade from your Ride deck. This is a direct copy of Y-Cross's Larig deck but worth copying. Remove all chance from ride. Secure your intended vanguard. But it also can be played around with a bit. Ride chains, which is likely what the Dragon Empire deck is focusing on, is a part of it. Seeing your intended vanguard grow. Vanguard only affects not being chance based or clogging up the deck. Use it as a side deck for specific matchups or dependent on whether you're going first or second. Effects specifically from the ride deck. Completely remove deck ratios bar triggers and turn the game's deck construction on its head. Lots of potential here, I really like it. The second is the over trigger. A one per deck trigger with 50,000 shield and a 100 million power buff that negates damage when checked as damage, removes itself to draw a card, and when checked during drive check, you get an additional effect. Decks will now be 46 cards thanks to the ride deck, so the chance of hitting this as damage or a standard drive check is 2%, while the chance of twin driving into it is 4%. It's incredibly sacky, but that's the point of it. I don't have an opinion on it either way, because of how it's been designed. It's not going to happen often enough to get upset about. I get why people are apprehensive about the sack, but look at the chances here. The third we know nothing about, but we can read between the lines. It's called Persona Ride. This is replacing gifts. Very likely Break Ride brought back, but locked to one unit. Can't say much more than that, we can't extrapolate anything else. But I do like the idea of sticking to the one unit. I like importance thrust upon units, and this is very likely that. We don't know where the statistical power levels are going. Grade 3 have been shown with 13,000 power, the current standard, while what seem to be Grade 0 and Grade 1 have 5,000 shields. I suspect since they're all placeholders, 
the V era power levels are staying. Front triggers too also seem to be staying. We'll see how this plays out, but I do miss stand triggers. With all the changes, they could have easily made homes for stand triggers. The last thing I want to touch on is Bushiroad is attempting to make the game more affordable. The five starter decks have a rock bottom price of 4 USD. Vanguard Rare is going away. Holofoil variants of Common and Rare are being introduced and an alternative foil treatment, Dress Secret Rare, seemingly taking the place of the Origin Rare. Vanguard Rare going alone dramatically reduces the cost of the game, as Triple Rare with the changes made in the V series crashed in value, for the most part, but it seemingly gets better. What I'm hearing is that boxes are going down by 10 USD in America. I hope this applies to Australia too, as the price of Vanguard keeps going up to the point where I now consider it to be unaffordable. I'm looking around, these series boosters seem to be about $8 now, where other games can be had for between $5.50 and $6 a pack, before any other type of discount for buying a box. Funny thing is, Vanguard used to be one of the most affordable games, with $4 booster packs, such as Life. I'd like to see the booster boxes drop by around $20 to $30. All in all, I think Vanguard Overdress is very promising. It cleans up a lot of the game and feels like a more polished product. I think in many ways it's more promising than V was when it was announced. While a lot of the changes are radical, I believe they are common sense. As I said, I've been an advocate of gutting clans from the game for a long time. I thought a good 8 clans could go, bringing it down to 16. But 5 with a special 6 is even better. I don't know if I'll buy it, but I'll keep a close eye on it and am open to the idea of picking up Vanguard again. Bushiroad seems to be doing a lot right in my opinion more so than they've ever done. Let's hope there's not some horrible bonehead decision lurking in the shadows. This has been some Gamer Dude, and thanks for watching.